local government in Ohio, Part B. So this is the second part of studying and going a little bit deeper of Ohio's local government. So we're not talking about the United States of America. We're not talking about Ohio as a state. We're going to go inside Ohio uh, into the local governments. And in this one, uh, in this video, we're going to go a little bit deeper, but maybe uh, more about cities. And more on that in a moment. But hopefully when you look at this Russian nesting doll image, it reminds you that there's this layer upon layer upon layer of government in America. And when we think of American government, we think that, yes, the federal government has some powers and responsibilities, the state government has power and responsibilities, and the local government has power and responsibilities. Some of those powers and responsibilities overlap. For example, taxes. You pay local taxes, you pay state taxes, you pay federal taxes. But... Uh, some things are very much just the federal government. You're not going to get a passport from your county to travel to Spain. You're going to get a passport from the federal government. Uh, you're not going to get a federal government beautician license. You're not going to get a local government beautician license or a nursing license or a teacher license. You're going to get that from the state level. But there are going to be some things that the local government will do. For example, providing you fresh water if you live in the city or uh, trash collection. Uh, all of these things, fire um, and police protection, local. So this idea that there's, there's federal, there's state, and there's local powers, responsibilities, is part of federalism, meaning there's shared responsibilities. And uh, as a citizen of America, you're going to have interaction with local government and responsibility to local government and state government and federal government. So we've talked about, uh, in the last video, counties and townships. But in this particular uh, Part B video, we're going to zoom in on municipal government, which would be cities and villages and school districts. So in Part A, we cover county governments and townships. Part B, cities, villages, and school districts. All right, so again, there are 88 counties, and in those counties, there is government. But inside those counties, there are oftentimes cities, and there always are, I should say, cities. But some cities are major cities in Ohio, and some are smaller. And even smaller than the, the smallest city would be villages, which all basically have the same type of structure. So when you hear the word municipal, think of city government. Compare that to county government. So the, obviously the cities exist in the county, and sometimes there's some overlap between municipal government and county government. For example, the county sheriff runs the county jail that's often located in a big city. And if you're arrested in that city, you go to the county jail, which is operated by a county official, but even though it's in a city. Are you confused yet? Okay. So we're going to go into deeper study now of cities and villages in Ohio. So whether we're talking about bigger cities like Dayton or the city of Dublin, all cities and villages in Ohio, as directed by the Ohio law and the Ohio Constitution, have a certain type of structure. There's basically two types of structure that a city government can have, whether we're talking Dublin or Dayton, doesn't matter the size. Uh, the first option is an elected council. Right, so this is Dublin City Council, each elected for a four-year term. So everyone you see here is the current, as of 2021, uh, the city council for Dublin, a four-year term, each of them. Now, they're not all elected at the same time. Some of them are elected by parts of the city they represent, or a few of them are represented at large, which means they just are at, uh, represent the entire city. Some are represent certain chunks of the city. But under Dublin's system, our Dublin city council, it is considered a weak mayor system, meaning that there is a mayor, of Dublin, but the mayor is actually picked from the council. So on the list here, uh, this picture of the city council, they vote amongst themselves. Once they're voted in, who they want to be basically the chairperson of the city council. That person is considered the mayor. And the mayor is mostly ceremonial and they run the meeting of the council. So they can do a few things like hold a mayor's court, but that rarely happens anymore. Mostly in Dublin, the mayor is the person who runs the meeting and has one vote, part of the lawmaking body for the city. That's what the city council does. They pass city ordinances, which would become the law for the city. 
the mayor in Dublin is just one of the city council members who chairs the meeting. Dublin picks a city manager. This city manager is appointed by the council to enforce the laws. So that's why we refer to it as a weak mayor system in that the mayor is not independently elected as a chief executive for the, the city. The mayor is part of the council and the council as a group picks a city manager to run and uh, to enforce the rules that are passed by the city council. So that's one option, a council with a weak mayor and a city manager form of government. A lot of cities have that around the state of Ohio, but some of the really big cities like Columbus, for example, has what we would call a strong mayor system where the mayor is elected separately by voters to a four-year term. So this is the executive, meaning kind of like the president of the city, right? They will make sure that the laws are enforced. So the mayor of Columbus is elected separately on his own ballot by the voters who live within the city of Columbus. Okay, so not everybody who lives in Franklin County can vote on the mayor of Columbus. Right? You have to live in the city of Columbus, which is in Franklin County, but Obviously, if you live in Dublin, you're not going to be voting for the mayor of Columbus, even though you live in Franklin County. You have to live in that city. Also, the people who live in the city of Columbus vote on the council. And you can see from this screenshot of their website, there are several on the council. Each of these council members are voted on by voters for a four-year term. Now, not all together. They're staggered terms. You might vote every couple years for a few of them. But if you are voted on the city council for Columbus or Cleveland or Toledo or Cincinnati, you make the laws or the ordinances. That's another word for a law and a city is an ordinance. You make the ordinance or the law and it's up to the mayor to make sure that those ordinances are enforced or followed. So the mayor might hire a police chief, the fire chief, all of that to run the city. But the council generally makes the rules and controls the money. They would decide how much money the mayor gets uh, to run the police department, to run the fire department for roads and bridges and all of that. So it's very much like the federal government in that there's separate legislative and executive on big cities like Columbus. But in Dublin, it's not that way. They're, they're all elected and one of the council members steps up to be mayor. Basically the team captain, that the team wants to be uh, wants to put in charge to run the meetings. But Columbus and bigger cities have separate mayor that's elected in his own right or in her own right. So we have municipal government. We have a couple options. We can have strong mayor, city council. We can have weak mayor, uh, city council. Same thing can be said for smaller cities that aren't quite cities yet. We refer to them as villages. So some smaller towns out in the county will have a village council, and they also might vote for a mayor of that village. And generally, it can be either a mayor is elected separately or a mayor is someone who steps up from the council. They would pick the mayor from their council. One other independent local government unit that we should talk about would be the school board. So under Ohio law, a school board is an independent local government unit that kind of operates separately from the city or the county. And in Dublin, we have five members on our school board, all of which are elected at staggered time. So they're not all voted on at once. It will be three one time, and then a couple years later, two will be voted on. All members of the Board of Education are serving a four-year term. So this would be the group that makes the, the rules for the school district. When school starts, when it ends, the calendar, what you learn. They make the rules, but the school board will then hire a superintendent to be basically uh, the mayor of the school district to make sure that the rules that are passed by the school board are enforced. So it falls on the superintendent to make sure the schools are operating the way the school board wants. And they hire principals and they hire the teachers and the bus drivers and the cooks, all of that. But again, a school board is a special type of local government. 
and it is strange to think about that the school board operates alongside and within cities and counties, but they have the power of a small local government. For example, they can tax. Now, they have to ask the taxpayers if they're willing to pay, and that comes in the form of a levy. You might see that on a ballot every couple years, which would fund the schools. Most of the money that comes to schools uh, comes from local property taxes. So there'll be some money that comes from the federal government and the state, but m the majority of it comes from the taxes that people pay on their property inside that school district. So they have the power to ask for taxes. And then once the voters say yes, they can take people's money and people can't say no, right? That's what taxes are. They also have the power to in enter into contracts, to buy other property, uh, even to take property through what's known as eminent domain, which means if a government needs the property, they can take it even if someone doesn't want to sell it. If uh, they believe it's for the good and will make the school district better or make the city better, eminent domain means that uh, you have to, to sell it to the government body. And in this case, a school district could take property if they needed it for extra buildings or for bus garage or whatever. Generally, that's not very popular, so school boards try not to do that. They generally figure out a way to buy it, and people are usually pretty good about selling property for the uh, use for schools because most people are into children and want them to learn, and it's, it's something that is never usually an issue, at least not uh, around here. But again, a local government unit alongside city government, alongside county government, alongside township government, is the local school board, an independent local government unit of which they're elected by uh, the voters. So there's basically two types of city government, right? Weak mayor, city council, and strong mayor, city council. And then you also have local school boards as well.